Cool. Well, what's up, 23 Hours Podcast? I'm your host, Games with Gerds, and I'm here with Natalie Higby. Natalie, how are you doing? Doing great. So happy to be here. <laughs> yes, thank you for being on. Um, for those that are listening, Natalie and I are actually old colleagues. We uh, used to work at a gym called On It. That's what it's called, right, Natalie? Yes. Okay, so that's where we met. And Natalie uh, just recently stopped being a trainer there. She has started a business with uh, an old friend of mine, Christian. Um, and Christian's actually going to be on a future episode. I would like to mention that. But I wanted to have Natalie on first because number one, ladies first, right? Like, we gotta, Ooh, I like that. Yeah. yeah. We do that. We, uh, we practice chivalry at 23 hours. Um, but Christian's going to be on later. I wanted to have Natalie on first, guys, because Natalie is actually somebody who has caught my attention recently. Um, she's blown up on Instagram. She produces amazing content. We're going to have you guys follow her at the end of the episode. But the reason I wanted to have her on is because a lot of the stuff that she posts about nutrition, a lot of the stuff she posts about lifestyle have caught my attention because it aligns a lot with what we talk about on this podcast. So um, in order for me to edify Natalie properly, I would probably have to spend 30 minutes. Um, but I just want you guys to know that she's a credible source of knowledge today. She's a really hard worker and she has created an amazing brand, the Durable Athlete brand alongside Christian, which I'm excited to talk about in this episode too. So Natalie, real quick, you used to be a teacher. Um, how did you get into training and stuff like that? Well, yeah, so I actually was a trainer first right out of college. I was going to school for education. I always wanted to be like a teacher and a coach thinking I would, you know, coach a sport at a school and be able to teach. And I found basically a gym and a community of people at the time it turned into a CrossFit gym back in like 2010, 2009, 10. Um, and while I was finishing my student teaching, I got the opportunity to work at this gym and basically run, uh, you know, do personal training, run classes, but more specifically, they wanted me to start up a women's group in CrossFit kids classes because mm -hmm. of my passion for working with uh, children and youth. And so that kind of like got me into starting my certifications just in the, in the fitness world. And so what I would do after I got some certifications was I would do my student teaching during the day and I would coach in the evening. That led to me when I graduated, just basically going full time in training. So I still got my teacher certification, but at that time I was really enjoying coaching. Mm -hmm. So I stuck with that for about three years. Um, after about three years, as maybe you've experienced in the personal training world, there were just a lot of things that came up that felt very challenging and just being young at the time and kind of not knowing where to go with my career. Um, I just decided, you know what, maybe I'll coach on the side and maybe I'll pursue this teaching thing that I always wanted to do and kind of just see how that goes. Maybe I'll, you know, be able to teach throughout the school year and then over summers I can get back into training kids over the summer and see if I like that kind of balance a little bit better. Mm -hmm. um, so that led me to basically coaching and then on, on the side I was subbing, trying to find yeah. a teaching position. Once I found a teaching position, I you know, got a job and I worked as a third grade teacher for three years. Um, the best part about Bless that was, kind of, I know, <laughs> um, not so different than coaching adults, trust me. Yeah. Um, and so what was great about that is it gave me like a chance to step away from fitness and mm -hmm. enjoy it again, just as someone who, you know, went to classes. I've always had that drive in me to continue to learn about the things I'm passionate about. And I've always been passionate about health and fitness. So while I was teaching, I was doing things like getting my precision nutrition certification. I got my fascial mm. stretch therapy certification. Mm. I was doing all the on it certs. So it was like on the side, I was still spending all of my time, like learning about what makes people thrive and, and healthy as, you know, to be as healthy as possible. And, um, I kind of knew I wanted to get back into it, but wasn't sure what that would look like. And basically I got approached by two different businesses. One was on it and another mm. was one called central athlete, which some of my friends who I had coached with previously started. Mm -hmm. And so this was my third year of teaching and they came to me and said, you know, we know you've been a coach in the past and we're actually really looking for like a strong female coach we see what you've been doing on the side and we think you'd be a good fit for us and so that's actually how i got back into the personal training and coaching world was i was kind of like itching for it but i didn't really voice it and i had people come to me it's almost like the energy you're putting out into the world maybe someone picks up on so oh, yeah. I think, um you know i was blessed to have those two great options and I ended up choosing on it. Um, and a big portion was because of the education that was coming through the doors there and the chance for me to continue yeah. to learn and get better. And so, yeah, I just kind of jumped at it. School ended on a Friday and I started interning at on it the next Monday. And uh -huh. then 
here we are now. I was at Onnit for about two years and now have started my own business, Durable Athlete. So that's kind of like my roundabout way, uh, my journey for me getting to where I am now. And I'm thankful for having both jobs and, and different perspectives on how to teach people, you know? Yes. I love that. And thank you for sharing. It seems, it seems like you and I uh, had a similar perspective of on it, right? Like the education there was insane. And I think I need to give a shout out to Sam Pogue for bringing a lot of that education through the door. And then also obviously John Wolf for putting in and Shane, all those guys putting on the certifications. Um, I remember the durability certification. We actually did it together. So yes, that was one awesome. of my favorites, obviously did that one multiple times. So yeah, that was that was probably my favorite too. I think I got the most value from that one as well. Cause like open chain, mo- go ahead. I was going to say you were there when Christian, like he first kind of stepped in and taught. I was, yeah. He was working like literally alongside Shane and he just kept looking at me in shame uh, the whole time because of how immobile I was at the time. <laughs> oh, I, I was just a meathead, man. Uh, and then on it taught me how to be less of a meathead and more of like a, you know, a movement guy. So I'm always thankful for that. A lot of the stuff that we talk about, Natalie, on this podcast, I know we shared, we talked a little bit before the episode, but some of it's personal development too. So personal development has been an area of my life that has completely revolutionized it. Uh, I say that because I didn't know, I think a lot of business owners, you being one, like, you know, like Mark Cuban, for instance, he'll like look back at his journey and he'll be like, oh, since I was a kid, I was selling Hot Wheels cars out of my garage or like Gary Vee, right? And you have this perspective of business owners, like these people who are just like these macho human beings, right? And I don't put myself on that level at all. Like the reason I love personal development is because I was never knew that I had that in me until Mm -hmm. I started reading, focusing on myself, like that self-awareness to know that, hey, I'm actually capable of doing this just like these people. I just need to think a different way. And then once I started doing all that stuff, it helped me out. But you mentioned something, the reason I bring all this up. In your little intro there, I was listening, believe it or not. Um, you mentioned that like what you put out, mm-hmm. you get back. And yeah. I love that because it's like the law of attraction. And I think that the level of success that you and Christian have had, I think speaks a lot to that. Because um, for those that are listening, like Christian and Natalie are, are the up and coming leaders, if not already the leaders of the durability slash uh, movement. I would say movement specialist, right? Like you guys are strength and conditioning experts as much as you are corrective exercise and mobility experts. And I kind of view like the industry as those two different things, right? You have like the people that are just focused on performance all the time. And then other people that are like really focused on getting people the prerequisites in order to perform at a high level. I don't know if that's how you look at it, but what would you say like the two, what is durability? Why is it like, what, how is it different than the normal fitness industry, I guess? Yeah, I definitely think there's a gap like you're talking about, right? It's like you see, you know, all these people talking about just getting stronger or just doing like these crazy high intensity workouts Mm. or on the flip side, they're just referring to like PT type stuff, right? So it's like, where do, where can we find the trainers that are actually understanding how to do both, how to give people what they want along with what they need and like how to move safely to feel better. Like so many people are out there just ruining their bodies. Um, you know, they're dealing with these injuries and their hormones are going crazy based on their training. And it's like, I think we just understood that there's that gap between the PT world and the strength and conditioning world. And we want to try to bring those together. And it honestly comes from both of our backgrounds. We each kind of bring our own little, um, like thought process to durable athlete. I would say mine personally is I've always been into personal development. Like you were talking about, I've always really been into like, I would use headspace all the time, right? I liked the meditation side of, of life, like learning right. how to control your thoughts and manifest your destiny, like that personal growth, yeah. like uh, mindset, right? And on top of that, I always just wanted to help people and I wanted to teach them how to have a growth mindset. So that's where like when you're coaching in a gym setting or when I was teaching third graders, like at the end of the day, it was always about teaching people that no matter where you're at today, we can learn from that and we can grow and, and get better, right? Yeah. We can oh yeah. We can not be afraid to fail because failure ultimately teaches us lessons to make us stronger and better. Mm. Um, mm. And then being an athlete, I was always very into um, like community and having a coach and 
training and getting better at different things. And also just fascinated with the human body and nutrition. I knew that that played a role in how we recover and how we're able to build muscle and perform. And so I just kind of started putting the pieces together in my own view. Mm -hmm. As far as training goes, I also like, you know, I kind of did a little bit of everything. I was always open to like, I'm going to try yoga. I'm going to do strongman training. I'll do like physique training. I'll do CrossFit. Like that's what attracted me to you and Christian, by the way, was that you guys were like, I don't want to interrupt, but like you guys were mobility people, but you guys also valued like, Hey, get strong and get yeah. jacked. Maybe not in those words, but like y'all didn't fear that. Right. No, totally. Like I, I 100% love feeling really strong. I love like empowering women to put on muscle and have that strength and confidence. Right. And you mm -hmm. have to kind of follow a strength program to do that. Right. It's not just mobility, although mobility is strength. Right. And we can mm -hmm. dive into that. But, um, and then, you know, just to kind of share a little bit of Christian's background, which I know he'll be on here, but he was able to work in like a PT clinic as a young teenager. And so he, I feel like brings a little bit more of like the movement side of stuff. Not that again, we kind of balance each other out. We both kind of, dip into everything but like i think i bring a little bit more of like what we're talking about today the health the nutrition the lifestyle piece and christian loves focusing on like movement and performance but we have conversations on a daily basis where we're understanding that it all matters right like you can't have one without the other if you're really yeah. looking to optimize someone's life and performance like your podcast you know it's not about the one hour of training it's about the 23 other hours in the day like how are we sleeping how are we recovering how are we mm -hmm. able to like shift between parasympathetic and sympathetic state and like mm. just under being more aware of what's going on in our body being more aware of our training being more aware of our thoughts and our environment and how that affects just how we interact with others right like yeah. i just want to make people better human beings yeah uh, and i think in order for people to be better human beings they have to focus on their health and their fitness and um with that comes nutrition and yeah all the other things involved yeah that's amazing. Uh, I, I like that too, because you just related it back to 23 hours and that's why you're on the podcast today is because a lot of the stuff that you and Christian do, I actually do too. Right. So like y'all's mobility stuff that you post, like I'll go and do it. Um, or I'll just implement it in my warm ups, and I just try and implement that stuff. Cause personally, like I don't enjoy doing that stuff, but I know I need it. Right. And I think part of this whole game is like discipline just building the discipline to do the things that others don't do so that you can have the things that other people don't right like if we go down the whole entrepreneurship talk and that like that's literally what we're doing right now in our lives but the same thing in the gym like you have to be willing to do more than others if you want to look the way that those people that you see online or whatever look like right so people I think have like a in terms of the mindset you discussed, they have kind of an instant gratification type mindset, right? Like social media has taught that society is kind of teaching that to us right now. We can get things at our fingertips, but one thing you can't get at your fingertips is like health, right? Like even if you're in a really good point with your health, small things compounded over time will eventually lead to chronic disease, will eventually lead to painful joints, chronic pain, stuff that uh, I think a lot of your clients experience, right? Um, and a lot of my clients have experienced before. In order to avoid those things later in life, you have to do the small things and not neglect them now, right? So just because you're 25 or 30 and you feel good and you can move good in space, but you're still neglecting like soft tissue work, mobility, doesn't mean that you're not going to be dealing with those things at 40, right? And I wanted to just hear your perspective, like, while we're on this, I know Christian's going to cover a lot about mobility and movement and stuff like that, but from a lifestyle perspective, because mm -hmm. you're a huge lifestyle gal, it's a lot of your content. Mm -hmm. What is it that people need to do to take care of their mobility or like achy joints in your opinion from a lifestyle perspective? Well, I love that you just talked about like the small things. So I'm always trying to reiterate, reiterate with my clients, like small wins equal the big wins. Like you mm -hmm. have to do those little things. And most of the time in this industry, if there's a quick fix, it's probably not healthy. <laughs> like, yeah, we, I agree. Right? Like we need to be thinking about, you know, the bigger picture, like, cool, where do you want to be in a year? I know that might seem far away for some people, but it's really not. And then again, in the bigger picture, where do you want to be in 10 years, 20 years, 30 years? I hope to be moving really well, feeling really well when I'm 80 something years old. Right. Mm -hmm. And I need to be thinking about that today in order to get to that point. Um, I don't want to wait until I, 
am injured and in pain and can't, you know, can't kind of reverse stuff. Um, you can always kind of start no matter where you're at, but like, yeah, I just want to be kind of working towards that to be my most optimal self when I'm as old as I can live, you know? Um, oh, yeah. so I would say, you know, with my clients, again, it's, it's about the little things. Like, are you drinking enough water? Are you sleeping seven and a half to nine hours? Like, how's your stress levels? And what are you doing for fun? Do you have, you know, family that you can connect with, especially in time like 2020 this year when a lot of us are mm. kind of isolated? It's like, how are you taking care of your, um, you know, relationships in your life and relationship with yourself? Because all of that plays a big role. And in the Durable Athlete, we have our four pillars of movement, breath, sleep, and nutrition. Mm. But I like to say that mindset is one that kind of embodies all of them right like you have to have the right mindset going into your training in order to improve all of those other things and I think you know I'm sure we'll both keep coming back to it to this but it's about all the little things we do on a daily basis from when we wake up like do we have a routine that kind of puts us into a good mood for the day that can help us perform at a higher level that day mm -hmm. do we have a fitness routine that we can stick to and be consistent with because we probably all have some sort of goals when it comes to aesthetics yeah. And then we have a mobility routine, even if it's not, hey, you know, once a week I'm doing an hour of mobility or, hey, every day I do my mobility, but maybe it's like every day at your desk, you do five minutes. Like that's yeah. a win, right? So it's about finding time where you can do those things and be consistent with them and not find excuses not to do them. Like they just, yeah. they need to be a part of your lifestyle. I like that you talked about like, you know, there's a difference between people who are consistent and dedicated and the people who continue to make excuses basically right it's like i just want people to understand that it doesn't have to be all or nothing that yeah. you can, you can just like do a little bit more or a little bit better each day and that will still pay off in the end um, yeah oh yeah. yeah yeah so i think again just kind of sitting down with people i usually sit down with people i'm like cool let's look at like how much are you sleeping what's your stress like what's your training like and nutrition and we'll just kind of talk about them and then I usually let them choose a couple things that they think they can work on at that time so again maybe people are just like wow you know what yeah I don't really drink that much water it's super simple right I might just start there with them it's like all right let's drink you know 16 ounces when we wake up in the morning start off on the right foot and then let's track throughout the day to make sure we're getting enough water in good and then a couple weeks later once they've got that down it's like cool let's look at your sleep schedule Let's try to make it as consistent as possible, making sure we get this enough, you know, this amount of sleep. And if not, then maybe we don't train that day, you know, like, but, but making sure that people understand, I still want them to be consistent with training, but there has to be some sort of sacrifice. Sometimes if you're looking to make like progress in your health and fitness, you do have to be dedicated and you do have to like figure out what are you willing to give up? Maybe you have to give up that extra hour of Netflix at night, you yeah. know, but but it's going to pay off. And hopefully the more I can educate people as to how that pays off, the more they buy into that process. And then they start to feel the effects and then you don't really have to teach them anymore. They just want to do it because they feel better. Wow. I'm going to pause just for a second to just take all that in. Uh, that was good. That was really good. I'm going to ask you a question at the end of the podcast too, where you're going to have to condense everything you just said into two minutes and that's going to be your challenge. So start thinking about that. Okay, um, no, don't, because then you're not going to be listening to me. Uh, so <laughs> one of the things I want to bring up is I think one of the reasons people have the, like the small wins you mentioned, people don't think about that because if you think about the fitness industry from like a market perspective, who, who really controls the industry, right? Like ultimately I would say sex sells, right? It always has, it always will news headlines are negative for a reason right because it gets more clicks shirtless photos physique photos get more clicks simply because of human psychology and i think people see that and they equate fitness to that right but i think what you're saying is like durable athlete isn't just fitness right you mentioned that it's the four pillars um you mentioned the movement you mentioned breath you mentioned recovery what was the fourth one sleep and movement sleep and movement so, and recovery is another one, right? Recovery is not in there, but we focus on that. So the pillars would be movement, breath, sleep, nutrition. Okay, cool. So we're going to cover nutrition in a second, but I want to talk, I had a breath. We were talking about it before the podcast and then email I sent you. I was like, can we just talk about breath? Like what, so breathing meditation, if you look at all the personal development gurus, right? And you look at what successful people do to not only feel good mentally, 
physically, but also spiritually, I think everybody mentions meditation. And I think mm -hmm. meditation is ultimately breathing. And I think that's why you guys include breathing into your philosophy. Am I, am I hitting the nail on the head there? 100%. And I will also say that, you know, we don't necessarily like light our incense and sit there and meditate every morning. Like I think sometimes people get that picture, right? Of like, Oh, I need to sit down, yeah. close my eyes and breathe, but I don't have time to do that. Right. And I will say that in our busy schedule, we don't always have time to do that either. But I know in the email that you sent me, you had mentioned um, just the fact that you've noticed that we go to Barton Springs a lot yeah. and this is like a pool in Austin. And for me, if I could start every morning there, I would, because I like to choose things that are like moving meditations for me. So when I'm in the water, I obviously don't have my phone on me. I'm not listening to music. I just, you know, you're outside in nature. And when I swim, I just try to literally focus on the present moment, yeah. focus on my breath. And that's ultimately what meditation is to me, at least is being present, not thinking about the past, not thinking about the future. Mm. And one of the best ways to be present is to focus on your breath. And that's why we bring in breathing into what we do is because it can shift your state very quickly. Yes. You just come back to your breath, a breath. And that's another thing that we talk about is like up regulation and down regulation. And you know, how can we use these to either perform better or to sleep better, mm. to recover better. And yeah, so breath is a huge piece of that equation. But when it comes to meditation, for me, it's just about, you know, pausing what you're doing and focusing on that breath for a moment or being really present, whether you're doing the dishes, walking, whatever it might be. So I just want to throw that out there for people. It's like, you know, it doesn't have to be sitting with your eyes closed. It can be, and that's great. Thank but you. I think it's just the practice of being present. Thank you yeah. so much. Okay. So excuse me, I got a cough. <laughs> so, Okay. Wow. So one thing you said that I'm like, all right, let's just explore that is because meditation, I was reading a book. Uh, there's a really, there's a New York times bestseller that just hit the list. I think it's called think like a monk. Have you heard of it? I have heard of it. I haven't read it. Haven't okay. That's okay. I read like, I'm a bookworm. So I read like 30 pages and I set it down and I'm not trying to say, don't read the book. I'm just saying it wasn't for me. And I say that because like, obviously what do monks do the majority of the day meditate, right? Yeah. So like I get his, I think the whole purpose of the book is to teach people how to like get into that parasympathetic state, right? Because we're all like so high strung all the time. Mm -hmm. But like you mentioned that meditation isn't sitting in a corner and like closing your eyes for 20 minutes, right? People can start at like two minutes. People can start at three minutes. People can start at one minute. Mm -hmm. I have personally don't find value in meditation because my exercise routine actually includes it. So in between my weight training sets, for optimal muscle gain, people need to rest way more than they do, right? Yeah. Like we're talking like two minutes plus, please, people start resting more. And a lot of research is coming out to support that. Um, originally, like even NSCA was like, hey, you know, a minute is good or a minute and a half. Well, that's actually proven to not be as effective as longer rest times. I was raised to literally be on my feet working like 24 seven. So what I've done now is like in between my weight training sets, I have noise canceling headphones, and I sit down, I close my eyes, and I just feel my body. And I think about where I am in space, kind of that kinesthetic awareness. Love that. And it's, you know, it helps me focus on my next set and stuff like that. But that is my meditation time, right? So people listening to this, the reason I wanted you to highlight the value of breathing, ultimately, it's breathing, catching your breath, slowing your breathing down, feeling your heart rate, mm -hmm. um, focusing on being present. That is the reason why meditation works, because it changes your state, right? So I just... I wanted to highlight that because I like agree with everything you've said so far. So don't screw it up. Okay. Um. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, I appreciate that. And I, yeah, we're on the same page. I love that you do that. Um, you know, that's something yeah. I haven't necessarily spoken about that, but on my Instagram, there's times when we talk about even doing some like intercept mobility or just, just taking enough rest, but sometimes people need something to do. Mm -hmm. um, but basically just being like, you don't have to go to your phone every time you are in between sets. Like it's just more stimulation. Like what if we just stop? I love that you're saying you just stop and feel your body and, and bring that awareness to how you're feeling in that moment. Um, so yeah, I, I, I just love what you said there. Thank you. And if you're a big boy like me, you're most likely sucking wind between sets. So it's a good time <laughs> to sit down and try and slow down your heart rate. Um, I was I raised to- say, If you're lifting heavy enough, you need to like there's high, like i will do a set of whatever right and i'm like oh cardio like let me catch my breath like i'm mm -hmm. not ready to go hit another set like 
I need two minutes or more of rest in order to go back and get stronger. So I know. Right. And like doing a leg, a leg day, right? Like it's, it's almost like doing wind sprints, you know, especially if you're doing any type of uh, metabolic work, it's, it's almost like doing conditioning. So um, yeah, we could sit here and talk about training all day long and I don't want to get down into that rabbit hole. Cause I talk about that on every other episode, but today we have Natalie Higby here. So we're going to talk about nutrition. We're going to transition. I love the lifestyle stuff so far. Um, I think a lot of the listeners are going to get value from that, but I think primarily in this episode that the listeners are going to get a lot of value from, I actually haven't talked about nutrition on here yet, Natalie. And oh. I wanted to have you on here to bring up the topic because I think you and I have the same approach. I don't think we're dogmatic. Uh, you know, just as well as I know that the nutrition industry is full of false advertising and marketing gimmicks. And it's that way for a reason because polarizing information sells the people that listen to this podcast we're not trying to sell them anything. We're just trying to give them information that can benefit their lives and optimize. Right. So as far as nutrition goes, you came from on it and I was at on it too. And obviously keto was a thing. There's a lot of people, uh, the culture there supported a lot of crazy, I would say like, you know, very polarizing points of views in terms of nutrition uh, amongst many other things that we won't cover. But what is why precision nutrition, right? Like that's where my background came from too. When Sam brought them in, I was introduced to that and I really liked their philosophy, but why did you were actually PN before that? Right. So what, what is your philosophy on nutrition in a nutshell? And why do you focus so much on the science and not on what all these other things say might or may not work? Well, it's a huge question. Yeah. I was about to say, it might be hard for me to put in a nutshell, but I'm just going to basically say that, my approach to nutrition is finding what works for you. I'm just going to keep it really simple. Like I like that. Yeah. Everyone is different. Therefore 100%. there will be different diets and different things that we can eat that make us feel good and perform better. And it's 100%. ultimately up to that person to hopefully even work with a coach to help them get there, but to really take it upon themselves to figure out what works for them. And there isn't just like a one size fits all for everyone. That's what I, yeah. you know, try to, teach to people is like, um, you know, depending on your situation, one diet might work better for you. Um, but at the end of the day, you have to find what works best for your body. And, uh, you know, well, some people might adopt the keto, some people do paleo, gluten-free, whatever it is. Like I'm ultimately just about people feeling better and performing their best. Right. And mm -hmm. again, we're different. People might be allergic. To, some people might be allergic to eggs. I don't know. Right. And then Maybe you take that out of your diet and then you bring them back in and you're fine. But like, I just think to what, to what you were saying earlier, it's like people try to sell people on just like eating very few calories, which tends to mess up everyone's hormones. And then they're stuck and they're in this place of like, they're not sleeping well, their mood is messed up, right? They're having these cravings. Yeah. They're not able to put on muscle. Like they destroy your metabolism. Is, yes. Yeah. It's terrible for health. Right. But that's like, what's being preached is like, 1200 calories and like, like uh, move more and eat less. I hate that. I'm like, that's the exact yeah. opposite of the equation. Yes. I just say, I don't know. I just have always been a truth seeker, I yeah. guess. And want to keep it really real for people, I only want to provide information that I think actually helps people. I'm not trying to sell people on anything. And through my research, which has just been honestly, because I've tried to find what works for me. So I share, you know, different things I've done. And the more I learn, you know, again, if I'm kind of looking into something, if I learn value there, I want to share it with others. Um, yeah. And precision nutrition just honestly happened because I forget how I found it. Maybe just through people, but Christian actually noticed that I was just nonstop reading about nutrition. And he was like, why don't you just pay to do the, the certification if you're already spending all that time researching it? And I was like, that's a great idea. So that's actually, yeah. that was one of those things I did while I was teaching third grade. I would like wake up in the morning and read PN and I would do it at my lunch break and all that. Um, mainly cause it just interested me. Like I wasn't even planning on doing nutrition coaching at the time. Um, yeah. but their approach is very habit based. So I'm sure, you know, but for the listeners, what I love about PN is it's not about here's this diet, here are your macros, here's this meal plan. It's again, thinking about like, how is this person sleeping? How's the stress in their life? How's mm. their training? How are their relationships? Mm. Where can they start to make improvements on their lifestyle? Because all of those things will then 
have an effect on how they look and how they feel. And most right. of the time people are looking into nutrition because they want to look a certain way or they want to feel better. Right. Yeah. And, um, nutrition, yeah, just plays a huge role in how we think and how we feel and how mm. we perform and how we recover. Um, and so I, I just, they have been a huge influence on like making sure that you're not just diving into someone's nutrition program being like, here's your macros and here's your meal plan. But talking about all those other things, like, How's your sex drive? How do you feel when you wake up? Do you wake up multiple times in the night? Like you got to start somewhere. Right. And I think yeah. what's cool about what they do is like working with each client um, really as an unique individual and figuring out where they are at. Like you might have a great understanding of nutrition and you've already, you know, been like, yeah, Natalie, I sleep nine hours every night. I train consistently. My relationships are good. Like I really just need help with my protein intake, let's say, right? Where someone else coming to me might have no idea about nutrition and all those other things in their life are off balance too. And it might benefit them more from just focusing on something that doesn't even relate to food. Like, yeah, you know, like that's, I, it, yeah. I don't want to interrupt you, but thank no, you. Sure. Context matters. And that's yeah. something that I think I say in every episode that our listeners agree with. And I think that's why they listen here is because context is everything, right? Like I am a meathead. I will be the first to tell you. I am on a muscle bound journey to be 260 pounds at 12% body fat without the use of any drugs, right? I am hundred percent against any use of drugs. I hate the fact that the nutrition industry is polluted with steroid junkies that even mention meal plans online because yeah. all they do is confuse people. And th- like people need to understand that like, if you put that needle into your body, anything you do will work. There's recent research that came out, I think from the University of South Florida that literally if you take any anabolic drug that's currently on the market, I think it was mostly steroids, but you will gain muscle even if you don't work out. So like stop listening to these people at the end of the day, stop listening to them, but they control the industry and fitness and nutrition run hand in hand. I think you mentioned the reason I bring up context and I wanted to pre-frame that is because I don't talk about nutrition because I don't want to confuse people. Like I don't, I I eat 3,400 calories a day. Like I have, I have to eat sugar in order to hit my carb intake. Right. And for somebody who doesn't, who's not as active as I am for me to be like, go eat sugar. It's not going to be good for them, but it makes sense for me because I'm an athlete. Right. And it's like, in order for me to have any conversation, even on keto, like I have nothing against keto and I'm always thankful of on it for honestly, I was so middle of the road. I'm always thankful for on it for getting me off that path. And I learned a lot there too, because like I knew a lot of people at that gym that were on keto and it was working for them. Right. And it was a lifestyle for them. They were bought in. I also have family members that have done keto and it's destroyed their metabolism because they didn't know how to reverse out of it and it wasn't sustainable for them. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know, there's all these different ways to have this conversation. So I appreciate you saying context matters because I really do think it does. Uh, What are, so you mentioned some lifestyle stuff though with nutrition ultimately you ended up talking about lifestyle. I don't know if you noticed that. I know so. because everything for me like goes back to that, but I want to just say something real quick. I love that you talked about like you eating sugar and cereal and whatnot. Um, I recently kind of worked my way up to, you know, 31, 3,200 calories pretty consistently. Mm. Um, Cause I was trying to put on some muscle too after quarantine and like getting back into lifting. I was like, let Heck me just yeah. really like build up here. Um, And literally one of the things I would do every night is I'm like, I need more carbs in my life. So I'm eating cereal. Right. And of course I try to maybe choose one that's quote, like healthier than others. But that's another thing I just want people to realize, especially women is like, don't be afraid of carbs. I love carbs (laughs) and they are very important. Um, Fats and protein are too. Right. But kind of like to your point, like it can be confusing because what you're doing doesn't work for the person next to you. What I'm doing doesn't work for the person listening. Like principles might work, but it, it takes like exploring. It takes tracking. Sometimes it takes like staying somewhere for a long period of time to see how that works for you. And then making minor adjustments either way. But if you're just guessing nonstop, that also, you know what I mean? Can be confusing for you too. So yeah, you mentioned it's so tricky. It is super tricky. And you mentioned tracking. Can we, tracking what what is and you mentioned fat protein and carbs i would like to maybe somebody listening to this doesn't know right so like those are the three macronutrients that provide energy to the body in different ways i guess and there's like alcohol as well which is kind of the 
fourth, like the, the lost cousin or something. Uh, yeah. Can you talk a little bit about macros? And then you mentioned, you mentioned tracking. What do you mean by tracking? Tracking calories, tracking macros? What tracking is it? Tracking calories and macros. Yeah. So, you know. Is it necessary? I would say it, it's not necessary. It depends on your goals. I think the more specific someone gets, the more it is necessary, right? Because you might need to hit a certain number and you need to know what you are putting in your body in order to hit those numbers. Like it's as simple as that, right? But for maybe let's just say my mom, right? Who's never tracked a day in her life could probably benefit from just eating quote, like more real food versus yeah, yeah. fast food or something. I know your mom. I'm not going to have her track, right? Like my mm. mom doesn't want to weigh her food and put it into her, t her phone. Um, maybe, you That's know, good, she, yeah. yeah, maybe she could just go based off of like, do I feel satisfied? Do I feel stuffed or do I feel hungry? And kind of just like listening to your like hunger cues, I guess. Yeah. But for other people who do have specific goals, like you were talking about putting on muscle or maybe someone has spent some time putting on muscle and wants yeah. to then like cut a little bit and lose some fat, then I do think that there might be a period of time where it would benefit people to basically weigh and measure their food yes. and figure out how many calories they are eating on a daily basis. And then what you were saying is like macronutrients. So how much protein are they taking in fat and carbs? And if I had to just personally like say what was the most important for me and what I would teach my clients is like protein intake. So like calories and protein. And then I would say carbs and fat, uh, you know, might be able to vary a little bit day to day, if that makes sense. So like maybe mm. someone goes a little bit higher on carbs some days and a little bit lower and they switch it out with fat. As long as you're kind of in with, you know, within these ranges that I would, you know, fine for people. So let's just say for me, um, I don't know, 85 grams of carbs and, or sorry, 85 grams of fat and 300 grams of carbs on a daily basis. I might be a little more flexible with those numbers, like on any given day, but I would try to hit my protein goal and my calorie goal. Like that would be most important to me yeah. depending on what I'm trying to do at that moment. Does that make sense? Oh yeah. I mean, I'm going to, I'm going to first off mention that I, I slipped at your mom joke in there. I don't know if you heard that but no, what did you say? <laughs> don't worry about it. I just said, Oh yeah, I know your mom. Um, oh my I think, God. yeah, take, I don't know your mom, by the way. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, I love your mom jokes though. And I think comedy is a good way for people to learn. I think I'm a funny guy. I, I'm actually the funniest guy I know. Actually. You are you I'm are kidding. Funny. Um, so protein plus carbs plus fat mm -hmm. equals your total calories for the day. I just want to mention that because I feel like people are like, wait, what are your calories? What are these macros? And then alcohol also contributes to calories as well. So that's the fourth macro um, that oftentimes really isn't talked about. And I don't know why, but like I drink, you know, so like I didn't know how to track my alcohol for a long time because it doesn't really get mentioned. Obviously, if you read a sports nutrition textbook, they're not going to have a chapter on alcohol consumption, right? Because if you're not, you know, you're not supposed to do it. But I agree with you. Protein, like hit that, set a goal try and be specific with it. And then I also like, do you need to track? And your answer was specificity. And I love that because that is the answer. Like if somebody's like, Hey, do I need to track food? And you're like, well, how specific do you want your results to be? Right. Yeah. Because yeah. if you can, if you can measure it, you can improve it. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's really, it's a really cool perspective that you have. And that's why I wanted to have you on to discuss that because that is a very tricky conversation and I didn't want to approach it by myself. I needed somebody else outside of my circle and who is currently running a brand helping people and serving people with this philosophy to present that information as opposed to me, because I want my listeners to really understand that like, guys, that is the best way based off of like science to approach this. It's specific and it matters to, to what adaptations ultimately you're trying to elicit. Right. So. Definitely. And I, I highly recommend it, you know, and then on the flip side, you have people who it stresses them out so much to track day mm. in and day out and they start getting, um, you know, like too stressed, I guess about it. And so again, it's one of those things where context matters. I recommend people getting a coach and being able to like kind of talk through it, or at least maybe a friend or a mentor who can help you with it. Um, because for some people they would be able to track, you know, every day for, forever, I don't know, or for a year, whatever they need, and they'd be fine with that. They can handle it, right? They can handle like hitting their macros majority of the days and on days when they don't, not freaking out. And then you might have those people that it just constantly stresses them out. Um, 
And we also don't necessarily want that for people, but I do think there's a lot of value in people tracking for, you know, a week or two and just getting a better idea of how many calories they're actually taking in, whether it's, you know, too much or too little. And what I find, uh, you know, with men and women, but women specifically in the health industry, people who are working on their fitness, I guess, right? It's like, I want to be more fit. They're health conscious. I feel like they tend to under eat, right? It's like, they're trying to be healthy. So they're limiting their carb intake and they're doing all this stuff. And it's like, you're not eating enough to even put on muscle, right? Which is then going to help you get to what you call like toned and lean. We need to be able to build muscle and we need fuel food to do that too. So like mm. to eat enough for that. And I think a lot of people actually find that they start to look and feel better when they start eating more. They're like, Oh man, like now you can see my muscles, right? Like now I yeah. feel good, I'm sleeping better. And so I do think, yeah, like if you want to be very specific, you need to track. And there are certain people where that's going to work better or worse for, but um, I think it's worth trying to at least know where you're at. And, and then again, kind of reassessing your goals. Like what are your goals and can tracking consistently help you get there? Yeah. So do you use an app to track? Yes, I do. Okay. Um, which one do you use? I mean, I recommend just like my fitness pal is great for people. Cool. I feel like that's a pretty common one. And then, um, is it chronometer? Yeah. Have you ever heard of that one? Yeah. There's uh, avatar too. Yeah. That there's one. A ton. There's other ones that I still recommend. Um, I just would, I would say to any that you're using though, I would input your own stuff versus maybe using what's already in there and don't, guesstimate but actually weigh and measure because even you know if you're just guessing you could be way off at the end of the day let's say everything you guess is 50 to 100 calories off um at the end of the day that makes a big difference right based on what you're eating and so i would just say like put your own entries in and be sure to weigh and measure everything if you're going to actually go down that path uh, just to yeah. have a really accurate picture of what you're eating I love that. And obviously there's registered dietitians too, right? Like they yeah. have, yeah. they have more perspective on the micronutrient game and like how to vary micronutrients, which are vitamins and minerals for those listening. And then what certain people need to eat with like, if you have health complications, if you have any chronic disease, any of that stuff disqualifies you from listening to what Natalie and I are saying right now. You need to go get like professional advice from somebody. I want to mention that just because like if somebody comes to me with diabetes, I'm not going to prescribe them macros because I'm not comfortable with that. Maybe you are right. But I'm like, no, like that's out of my, that's out of my zone. Um, I would just recommend that you guys, if you're confused about nutrition, if there's one thing that you study in the whole health industry, Natalie, you might agree with me on this it would be nutrition, like learn how to eat correctly for your life needs. And I think everybody should track too, because it's going to give you perspective on portion size, right? So once you start, your brain will start everything you do through repetition, you get better at. That's something we talk about on this podcast all the time. It's the reason why I love entrepreneurship. And I know that I can be whoever I want to be is just through practice and reps, right? Mm -hmm. Same thing with your nutrition. If your brain is able to recognize like, Oh, that's a lot. That's a huge portion of red meat. That's, that has a ton of fat in it. You don't know that unless like for two weeks, maybe two months, you were putting it into an app every day and you started to realize every time you put ground beef in, your fat macros went way up and you're like, oh, I didn't know beef had fat in it. You know what I mean? So yeah. I think people do need to track regardless of whether they have a specific goal because it gives them perspective and people weren't fortunate like you and I were to receive the education that we've received. And that's one of the reasons why I love doing this podcast is to share that information with people without trying to pollute their minds with a dogmatic approach to anything. So I appreciate your well-rounded perspective on that, Natalie. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your input as well. And I love what you're saying. And I just want to go back to like, I'm big on referring out and having a network of people that I trust. And I want to be as open with the people I work with as possible. So if I really feel uncomfortable about something they're coming at me with, or like, I don't know the answer, I'm not going to fake it. And I just want people to uh, take that approach with the doctors and the coaches that they're working with, ask questions and make sure that that's the right fit for you. And if that person doesn't know the answer, they should be able to kind of like place you with someone who does and yeah. it's your health and you should speak up for your health. I have personally been to a doctor who, um, you know, I was 
trying to basically like get off birth control because I hormone, I had been reading about it. Right. And I'm like, I don't even know what I've been putting in my body. And my doctor basically told me like, you have no other option. You have to take it. And I was like, I don't like you. I will never come back. Right. Like, yeah, I just want people to like speak up for their health and ask questions and make sure that the person they're working with has their best interest in mind and not just trying to make money off of you. So. Yeah, for sure. And I, I personally, uh, probably will regret saying this, but I think we give doctors way too much power in this country. I think they have way too much influence and I think they receive uh, very little education, right? They might go to school for nine, 10 years, but I went to school for six. So, and I was in, I was actually in class at the university of Texas at the Dell medical school. And I was in the same class with medical doctors. Mm -hmm. And I was talking about muscle physiology because we were in front of a dead body, a catheter. And I mentioned something about the lat, like the latissimus dorsi, right? Because we're all using technical terms and like why it was bigger on this dude than it was on that dude. And like, they looked at me like I was crazy. And I was like, you guys didn't know that muscles hy hypertrophy? Yeah. And they were like, they, they didn't even connect the dots, right? So like, I'm not trying to say that I probably just PO'd a lot of people, but you know what? That's what I'm here to do. Um, don't, and you mentioned it, I've actually stopped going to a doctor before too, because I educated myself to the point where I would ask questions about nutrition and like how I was feeling and why I was sleeping poorly. And they didn't have an answer for me. And I'm like, if you don't have an answer for me, bro, we're done here. Cause you can't give me results. And that's how the business world works. You either can give me results or you can't. And most doctors suck. I'm just being honest. So I want everybody to question their doctors. I want them it's up to us to raise the standard of healthcare in our country and to raise the standard of America, right? It, it, it's us that are going to make the change. And I think people just need to know that like, you know, doctors don't really study nutrition in their degree plan. They don't study muscle yes. physiology. Go see a strength coach, go see a registered dietitian, go see uh, nutrition experts like Natalie or myself to get that information and we can provide you guidance. And if we don't know, we'll direct you to somebody who can't. Uh, Natalie, on that note, Strength training, lifestyle, females. Let's cover that real quick and then we'll wrap up. So you've mentioned you like getting strong and I bet you probably got an important text message. So good for you, congrats. But um, we were talking before the episode about something that is going on in her life today that we're excited for. So everybody be excited for Natalie. Um, strength training for females. It's a big topic. Is that something that you're trying to like spend a good amount of your career like exposing? To, to females is like, Hey, you guys should gain muscle and you should get strong. 100%. Um, even so when I first started coaching, when I go back to like the days of when I was student teaching and started coaching at a CrossFit gym, I had a group and I called it ladies lifting. I was just like the women's only lifting group. And the whole tagline was, you know, strong and confident. And that's mm. something that I want to continue to push is like strength builds confidence. And there's something about just like picking up heavy, can I cuss? Of course. Oh, okay. Just like lifting heavy shit that makes you feel really cool and strong yeah. and good and capable. And, um, you know, it's like, I just want people to feel that empowerment and that comes with strength training. And so it's a fine balance where I'm, uh, you know, I try to push a lot of like the active recovery stuff in mobility training. And some of it is like down. I don't want to say it. it's like low intensity stuff. Right. But I also try to highlight the days where I'm, um, lifting heavy and trying to work on getting stronger. And I think there's a lot of value in what that brings self-confidence wise, but then also like physique wise and, and what people's goals are. Um, I think a lot of women specifically have this idea again, based on media that like the only thing they need to do is Peloton and run and yoga and then spin again and then run. And like, mm -hmm. it's not, you know, the sad news is that's not going to get them where they want to be. Yeah. Like at the Texas state rec center, when I was in college, there would be cardio equipment that lines the exterior of the gym, looking into the weight equipment. And like, it was literally females on the cardio equipment, yep. dudes in the weight. You know what I mean? Can't stand that. Yes. I know. Exactly a, what you mean, Cause I've been one of the only women, you know, lifting weights in there before. And every once in a while now I'll see more women like, and I love that. Um, but even things like, you know, there's this whole thing about like women wanting to build a strong butt, right? Well, like, hey, you can't, you can't do that unless you lift. So that's a piece of that. And like, even mm -hmm. talking about 
nutrition and calories that you're taking in on a daily basis in order to raise what we would call your resting metabolic rates, like how many calories you can even burn on a daily basis, if we want to put it simply. Like when you're building muscle, that number will increase. So that will allow you to eat more food and burn it off and have that more lean look mm. when you are building muscle. And it'll allow you to have a little bit more leeway with your lifestyle, right? If I have 3,400 calories that I burn every day, whether I sleep the entire day and don't move or not, it's my RMR, right? Mm -hmm. Then I can go out to happy hour with my coworkers and have a few drinks and eat some queso. And it's not going to like destroy my physique, right? So it's like the more muscle you have, the more... Um, the more leeway your lifestyle can have, right? That's really the importance of muscle uh, in terms of the metabolic. So thank you for mentioning that. What about joint integrity and safety, that, right? That. Yeah. Yes. As I was say, the other piece is just injury prevention. I mean, there's plenty of studies out there that show that one of the greatest things you can do for injury prevention is strength train it's to get stronger. And when, when, you know, Christian, and I refer to mobility, which again, I know you guys will dive down this um, more later, but like, it's essentially being strong in a specific range. So it is strength training. Um, and the stronger you can be in specific ranges, the more likely you are to prevent injury or at least bounce back quicker from that injury. And so, yeah, strength training provides a ton of value for strengthening your uh, tendons um, and just making things work better. You're, you're just stronger overall to like withstand wear and tear that we put on our bodies. Yeah, that was a really good, really good way to look at it. And the mobility conversation is obviously like almost an entirely different episode because if you don't have strength in certain ranges, those are the, the ranges that you're going to get those musculoskeletal injuries in, right? Mm -hmm. Potentially even joint uh, integrity issues as well, like with ligaments and stuff. So I'm excited to have that conversation with Christian and I want to wrap up, but before we wrap up, I wanted to, uh, you're going to hang around. I'm going to stop recording by the way, and then you're going to hang around. Okay. But before I stop the recording for our listeners today, um, guys, we had Natalie on and I, I don't kid when I say this, Natalie, you guys are going to go follow her on social media. Where can they go find you, Natalie? So I just switched my name back over just to my name. So it's Natalie, N-A-T-A-L-I-E, dot, little period. And then Higby, my last name is H-I-G-B-Y. So that's my Instagram, Natalie.Higby. Our website is durableathlete.com. And those would be like the two main places. Um, you can find me on Facebook as well, but I'm definitely very active on Instagram and then tons of information on our website. Um, as far as blogs go, signing up for our email list, we're constantly sending out, you know, educational things or just updates on what we have going on in our lives, uh, through our emailing list. And then you can also find access to our app there. Mm. And that's what we're going to finish with. Uh, thank you. So yeah, you guys definitely go follow her and sign up for their email list. They, I'm telling you guys, they provide some unique content and it's very holistic and very well-rounded. So not dogmatic. It's going to help you guys be durable ultimately, right? Like everything is around that durability concept, which I love. Um, we discussed that at the beginning of the episode, you guys recently launched an app. Okay. Um, and I want to just give you like two minutes to kind of tell us about, the durable athlete app. Uh, you guys ju literally just launched it, which I, one of the reasons I reached out to you is I got excited and I checked it out. I was like, Oh my God, this is awesome. So, uh, wh who's it for and wh who can go download it? I'm so excited about it. It's kind of still surreal. Sorry. So, um, yeah. we've been working really hard on this and we will continue to work hard to put more content in there. So what you see on there today, just know that more will be in there over time, right? We are filming on a weekly basis, which we're really excited about. Um, it's honestly for anyone. And that's what I love about it. We have daily workouts in there. So if you are someone who is working out from home or you're at a gym, but you're looking for like, Hey, what can I do on a daily basis for my workouts? We have that in there. We have daily durability workouts and we have specific programs. So the two programs we have in there right now are all body weight. So again, you could do this from anywhere. It's a four week kind of like beginner program and then a six week program we will continue to add to those programs. So we will eventually do you know, a kettlebell program, a strength program, uh, anything that people want, we can essentially make and put in there. So right now there's some body weight programs. There's the daily workout, the daily workout, just to kind of go back to that, has a mix of like body weight, 
kettlebell band and med ball stuff right now. Um, and again, that will start to expand even more over time. And then I think like what our bread and butter is, is the daily mobility stuff. And so we have daily mobility workouts. Right now we have certain days that are upper body, certain days that are lower body, and then full body mobility routines. Yeah. This can take people anywhere from five minutes up to 30 minutes, depending on how much time they have in their day. Um, and we also have a ton of like active recovery stuff. We have follow along videos of us doing maybe, you know, some of you maybe have a foam roller, but you don't actually know how to foam roll uh, properly or you haven't been right. coached on that. We have a ton of like actual videos explaining how to use the foam roller. We have down regulation videos. So we talk about like maybe post-workout as a cool down or at night to help you down regulate and go mm. to sleep. We have mobility routines that are follow along in there um, for you to move through. And then we have breathing exercises in there. Again, can be used at any point in your day, but especially after a workout or before bed would be great to help with that down regulation. Um, we also have lifestyle and, and uh, nutrition tips. So kind of like what we talked about today, like two to three minute videos um, where we're just kind of quickly explaining some of our thoughts on nutrition and lifestyle habits that can help people. And so, ooh, last one, sorry, desk mobility. So people who are working at a desk, who've been seated working at home, we mm. have tons, yeah, we have tons of desk mobility videos. So again, these are things that you can fit into your day regardless if, it, if it's morning, if it's pre-workout, po post-workout, working at a desk, nighttime, like that's why I'm so excited about it because it really truly is for anybody and everybody. It could be a supplement to what you are already doing if you're someone who just needs more mobility, right? Yeah. I had someone explain it to me like it's kind of like a headspace with fitness because of Ooh. the breathing videos in there and like it, it has that aspect to it. I can um, see that, yeah. Yeah, or if you're someone who's like actually just looking to follow a training program, you know, like we have a lot in there and we are excited to hear what people like and what they want more of because obviously we will um, just like I said continue to add content in there and we want to know what people are gravitating towards. So. so people can communicate with you guys through the app too? Yeah, well, not necessarily through the app. Um, what I love about the app is they can save their favorites. So you, okay. you know, if you have like a hip mobility that you really love, you can save it and add it to your library so you can go back to that. Um, it'll show you when you complete workouts. It's really easy to use. Okay. But for all um, subscribers, they will be welcomed and added into our private Facebook group. Bingo. And so that is where they will have access to me and Christian on a daily basis. That's amazing right there. So that's there. That's so these are busy people, guys. Natalie and Christian, uh, they do a lot of different things. Christian does a lot of sports performance stuff, right? Like a ton. He's got a basketball academy. Um, yeah, Natalie it's really taken off for him. It's cool. I know it's it's so cool, right? So this brand, like that, I've watched Natalie and Christian work with like probably hundreds of different clients over the past few years from all different walks of life. So no matter where you guys are right now, if you want the best tips when it comes to becoming durable and having longevity, go check out that app. Uh, they can download it from the app store. Natalie, is that how they get access to it? Totally. It's better for us if they go through the website, just going to throw that out there. Okay. Um, but can 100% go to the app store um, and, and find it there to search durable athlete. Sure. And I'll have that link in the description of this podcast for everybody as long with where they can go follow you. But uh, is there anything else that you would like to share with our listeners, Natalie? No, I'm just really excited that I was on here. It was so nice to chat with you. And I look forward to your listeners, you know, getting another perspective from Christian when he comes on. And yeah, I just want to welcome everyone to the Durable Athlete community. Would love for them to check out the app and reach out to me on Instagram or Facebook. And yeah, just looking forward to building. On Amazing. Yeah, you. and I'm, I'm thankful that you shared some time with us today. And I am really excited to be helping promote the Durable Athlete brand because it's something that I believe in myself. So I respect everything you guys are doing. And uh, I hope that you guys just explode that thing because the industry needs more people like y'all. So thank you for being on, Natalie. And I will go ahead and end the show and we can chat afterwards. Sounds good. Thank you.